not a tougher man you will ever meet. If you have yet to experience tears in the presence of Jesus, you need to man up. Because Jesus wept. Amen. You see that empty cross? I have yet to meet a man, and I spent 11 years in the United States Army with some of the biggest, baddest, meanest, lean, green fighting machine. Don't you let anybody tell you otherwise. We were trained to be killers. And I have not met anybody who was as loving. Nobody is tough. Nobody is great. Nobody is willing to give their life for anybody, let alone the undeserving as Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he died for you. He died for me. If I was the only one that God put on this earth, a mess that I was and a mess that I still make on a daily basis, he would have came for me. And he would have left that empty cross behind. He laid aside his deity. He laid aside his glory. And he stepped out of eternity. And he came down here into this mortal world. Amen. To be born and put in a feeding trough for animals. The king of the universe. Amen, brother. He was there with the father at the beginning. The word of God declares. In the beginning was the word. And the word, word. And the word was God. Yes. And the word was with God. Yes. And there was not anything made that was not made by him. And without him was nothing made yes. that is made. Amen. And in him was the light of the world. Amen. People, if you say that Jesus is your Lord, and I pray that you do, there is no time to be playing church. Mm -mm. Open up your eyes. Open up your ears. Woe to them when they say that which is evil is good. And call that which is good evil. Oh, yeah. Beware. The devil is a liar. The devil oh. is a liar. Yes, ma'am, my sister. Mm -hmm. He says to those that have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have mega churches out there, some of which are on fire for the Lord. But do you know that the enemy does not have to send his evangelists out into the street? They're already going to hell. No, his emissaries are sitting on the pews of the churches in America more prominently than anywhere else. Come to sow discord and complacency. Oh, I don't like to go to that church, preacher, because over there I feel convicted. Over there they want me to praise God and they want me to sing. I like to blend into the crowd. Well, church, there's some lukewarm ones out there for you. You can go and you can... Pony on up with the church of the Laodiceans. You can pony on up with those that are lukewarm. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord our God and He is a holy God. He is not a God of compromise or complacency. He says change because there is only one who changes not and that is Him. He says, I alone am God and I change not. Yes. He says, look around you. Do you think I will hold back forever to send forth my angels to gather the elect of God from the four corners of the earth? People, it was not all fulfilled. Our redemption was. But you can read every book of the Bible and see the millennial reign of the Christ King. I intend to be there with him. Yes. I intend to make the first bus off of this planet. Yes. I will not be left behind. No. And have some demon cost me my head mm -hmm. because I love Jesus. I survived way too many other things uh -huh. to be here today before you. Yes. But as I had the privilege yesterday, you know some preachers, oh gosh, I got to do another funeral. And while you have to prepare your heart to deal with the grief which is natural that people endure. There is no better time for people to realize the finality of this flesh that we live in. We think, oh, tomorrow I'll do this. Oh, I'm planning for my retirement. I'm planning for this and that. I'm planning for my retirement right here. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Hallelujah to the Lord.
the Lamb. That's what the Word of God says. Amen? I'm not here for a little dabble, do you? Me and my four and no more. Hi, God. My name is Jimmy. Gimme, 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 gimme. You know what? He says, I know what things that you have need of. I'm God all by myself. I'm, I'm faithful even when you're not. I cause my sun to shine on the just and the unjust and my rain to pour down on the sinner and the saint alike. Amen. He says, I command that you worship me. That you praise me. My glory I will not share with another. That's right. You know we've got a church, the giant church of complacency out there. Oh, I'd love to go to this one, to this program, and to that program. Praise God. I don't see a single thing different between you and the devils I deal with every day out on the street. <laughs> oh, well, I never. And I can tell. It shows. Come on. If you have been in contact with my Savior, with my Jesus, not some other one, it will be evident in your life. You will not be able to not tell somebody why you have hope in you. You will not be able to restrain yourself from praising Him in His presence. Glory. If you are uncomfortable doing that, then this altar before you leave today is where you need to be. You need to be getting hands laid on you because I'm telling you, thus saith the Lord, this year my sign will be seen in the sky over Israel of the Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. You mark my words. It is going to be seen. The super blood moon, it was declared in the scriptures. Know this, that great signs and wonders in the heaven will I reveal. And he didn't just be, you know, little, real, uh, what do you call it? Uh, he, didn't, he, he didn't just not explain it. He spelled it out. If you've missed some of the last messages, go on Facebook on Unshackled. You can see them. Every one, my bride puts them there. I don't got to preach it twice, it's there. Technology is awesome. I'm telling you right now, and believe me, I take this job and this position very, very seriously about what I say from here. I hear, get it from him. It doesn't matter who disagrees with me as long as he tells me to say it, I'm going to say it. Yes. I don't care if he tells me to go tell you it's going to snow in July and it's 120 degrees outside. If God tells me, Thomas, you go tell him, thus saith the Lord, I'm going to do it. Because I'd rather be a fool for Jesus than a dummy for Satan. Amen? Amen. 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 He's coming. Amen. Yes, he is. He's coming. Amen. Amen, he is. I've said it before. My wife and I have both declared it. This body of believers here, the spirit of the living God is welcome in this That's place. Right. Yes. And I need anybody to know if you've never been exposed to a message in tongues or interpretation of tongues, First of all, this beautiful sister right here, this is the first day I've had the privilege of meeting her in person. So in the event that anybody ever thinks that something is staged up in here, I mean, you got me all mixed up with the elephant man, okay? Because that ain't how I roll. It's me and Jesus till the wheels fall off. All right? It's his way or the highway. There ain't no other way. You see? And there's plenty other. Well, this church doesn't believe that, and that church don't believe that. There's only one church, and it's right here. And God said, my word does not perish. It will not cease. I got thrown out of Patton Bible College because my Baptist theologian professor stood up there two days after this boy got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I've shared some about Glory. that testimony. State issue boxers in a state issue fountain in between two halves of a Catholic church and the Protestant chapel that was built in 1949. Demon running all over the place. State penitentiary known as Dual Vocational Institute. Wasn't no vocations going on up in there. Man, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire. Mm -hmm. And I was a guy who, one of them ones who didn't believe all that stuff. Well, mm -hmm. it's really hard with your mess with your mind when something that you didn't believe all of a sudden happens to you. And you can't even Thanks explain it. And a prophet of God says, you're not going to be able to speak in English for three hours. Mm -hmm. Do you dare to believe me? In front of a packed out house, I'm like, stripped down to my state issue boxers and went outside and got dunked in an ice cold fountain in, Jul in uh, January. Mm -hmm. And Tracy, and with steam coming off of me, sat there just declaring the praises of God in some Thank language I had Lord. never heard come out of my mouth for three hours. They had to get permission from the awesome. chaplain to leave me there until they brought me back to my cell later. So you can't tell, you can't tell that, you know, and I don't mean to offend anybody else, but you can't tell this white boy that he ain't real and that his gifts are not for today because I've experienced it. Yeah. And for the last 20 something years now, it has been on fire inside of my bones. And so anybody that's been yeah. told some lie from the pit of hell that God has changed, you, you've been hearing a lie. You've been believing a lie. Because God says, I change not. 
That's so right. is my word, God says, That's that right. proceedeth forth out of my mouth, that it shall not return back to me void or empty, but it shall accomplish that thing that I please, and it shall prosper in the area whereto I've sent it. And, and I'll tell you what, I welcome anybody that wants to dispute the scriptures with me. I welcome. Because while I may not know it all, 23 years of seeking his face on a daily basis, I've done learned a couple things or two about where to find something in scripture. So back then I used to try and maybe avoid some of those confrontations. But bring it on. Bring it on, devil. Bring it on. Hallelujah. Because I can prove to you anything that you have been taught in error that it is still for today. Amen. Amen. Yes, he is. said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, people. All flesh. All. Everybody say all. 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 all flesh. Huh? In the last days. All the way to Fresno. That's right, sister. All the way to Fresno, all the way from the crack house to the white house. He says from the uttermost to the guttermost. It don't matter. There isn't anything too tough for him. Amen. Okay? It don't mean that you ain't saved because you don't walk in the gifts, but I don't like plain cake donuts. I like frosting on mine, okay? Amen? Amen. 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 Little devil, do you? Little devil, do you? Little devil, do you? Man, I don't know about you, but I was greedy for the things of the world when I was in the world. Am I talking to anybody else up in here? You never did nothing, just a little bit crooked to get ahead before? <laughs> Man, tell the truth and shame the devil up in here. The rest of y'all pray for that lying spirit on you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Because I know doggone well every one of us has done something in our life that the devil still reminds you of. Jesus has forgotten all about it. Uh -huh. Don't even know what you're talking about when you still were trying to repent for something you were forgiven for before. <laughs> and the devil every day. Ah, right. Hey, remember? Remember when? He'll even let you see it in your eyes sometimes. Remember when? You just need to tell him, you're a liar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get behind me, Satan. That's right. huh? That's I resist you. Mm -hmm. I choose to run to God. Do you know that you can't even take one step towards him because he judges the attitudes and the condition of our heart? The moment that our heart hasn't even told our brain that it's time for our feet to go that way, God already knows that you were coming towards him and he just comes running headlong. Thank you, Lord. Huh? huh? Awesome. But that's one thing that, that yesterday, you know, I had the privilege. You know, you're standing there and you just, a whole room. I said, I don't know, Brother Ronnie, how many? There had to have been 70 people and packed in that whole room there in the funeral place there in Fresno. And, you know, and, and of course, everybody, you know, is sad. And, and sometimes, no matter how many you've done, it's like a challenge. Like, Lord, you know, in, in your humanity, you want to be something for these people or whatever. But all we can do is say, Lord, I surrender to you. Have yes. Way. Have your way, Lord. Amen. If you need me to be a fool for you, whatever you need, Lord. You know, and sometimes people will say stuff that might even offend other people, but God has a way of taking things and turning them around. Yes. That which the enemy has intended for evil, he will turn around for the good. Huh? For all things work together yes, he does. to the good for them who are the called. Huh? According to his purpose. Amen. Amen. That's you. All you need to do is be willing to hear his voice yes. glory, and obey. Glory, glory. So many of us hear, but we don't obey. Oh, Lord, no, that couldn't be you. I'll go over here and minister to that one. Oh, no, Lord, I'll go over here and tell them that. If I say that, it puts me on the spot, and, and I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't even Lord, if I, if I sing even a little bit loudly, if I do anything other than, uh, than you know, vanilla ice it, lipstick it, you know, uh, maybe somebody else will hear that I don't sing so good. If my singing ever makes anybody's ears cringe, I, this is the only apology you'll ever get you right now. I apologize in advance, but me, I love to worship my Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. They had to extract singing cadence in front of soldiers out of me when I went to the drill sergeant academy because I didn't actually want to do that. And I never claimed that singing cadence is the same thing as singing worship to Jesus. But you know, something happens as you do it. Yes. The more you do it, like anything else, yes. the better at it you get. Now, you may not all of a sudden get some great singing gift, <laughs> but you, at the very least, will experience as you get over your fear. As more importantly, you get over yourself. Yes. So wrapped up in ourselves sometimes that we no, prevent our own we... self. Oh, here we go, the unholy trinity again. <laughs> Created in his image and likeness, are you? <laughs> Isn't that what the word of God declares? Yes? Yes. Uh, that was pretty weak. Come on, man. I, I warned you all in advance. Your pastor 
is a retired drill sergeant. All right, I don't go for when I ask for a response, I want one I can hear up here. And it's a it little room. Right. I can hear crickets in the corner. Amen. <laughs> this is a participation sport. Amen. 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 The Christianity, it, it, it isn't a spectator thing. You know, it's a participation thing. I like my church. Amen. Well, we like you, sister. We love you. Amen. I, I love people that are obedient I, to the I Spirit of God. I didn't even know it was here. Well, now you do. But he brought. Amen. It's his fault. Uh huh. And the Holy Ghost brought him, but God used, and the Holy Ghost, that man in the back row, to bring him. You see, God does everything. Nothing is a mystery to him. Little, little sidetracks, little annoyances, and everything else. Do you know that all the things, oh my God, I should have died a hundred times, and how many of us say that, you know, in our life? But you know, none of it caught God by surprise. None of it caught him by surprise because he knew you while you were yet in your mother's womb. And he who knows the end from the beginning, he called you and he appointed you. As a matter of fact, Paul wrote to the Ephesian church. He said, know this, that you are preordained and predestined before the very foundation of the world to be adopted as his children. Yes. Huh? Amen. He didn't just get stuck with you. You weren't a mistake child. You weren't his love child. Huh? He looked out through eternity and he said, you know what? Not this one or that one, but I take that one and this one and that one and this one. He didn't say, oh, they're going to make mistakes. He said, I like this one and that one and I'll take them and I'm going to call them my own and I'm going to make them my people and I'm yes, going to be Lord. their God. Amen. Amen. But you know what? There is an expiration date just like a carton of milk on the world as we know it. And I say, as we know it. Because you get all these doomsday prophets out there, well, on this date, the world's going to end. Well, they're not too far off. The world as we know it. Everybody's apple cart is about to get upset. You know that I'm not a gambling man. Do you know that there are over 7,500 prophecies in the Word of God, and every single one, on time, to the minute, has come to pass, yeah. save one. You are about to see the second to the last one before your eyes in the sky in front of the entire earth this year, 2017. Most prominent over the nation of Israel and even more importantly over Jerusalem. Y'all see the angel, the archangel standing there and behind him is the temple mount. Of course, y'all know that's not a Christian landmark behind him, but that was also in prophecy. If y'all didn't know that, that's what that is. That's in Jerusalem. That's the Temple Mount built over what they believe to be the birthplace of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. My Messiah. That is, yes, ma'am, my Messiah, your Messiah, yes, ma'am. And he is coming back, and he is going to establish and set up a kingdom. You know that if God said anything even once in the Bible, it was eternal? And God doesn't do anything halfway. God does not make any mistakes. Man makes mistakes, but not God. He didn't make a mistake by calling you. He didn't make a mistake by Jesus coming to the cross. He didn't make a mistake by making you get up and come here today. He never makes mistakes. No, he doesn't make mistakes. That's right. Sometimes there's little annoyances that come our way. Why? Because he loves us exactly the way that we are. But entirely too much to leave us this way. Entirely too much. Because in our flesh, that is in our body, the, the Bible says, it's no good thing. Huh? It's true. No flesh can glory in his presence. That's right. That's our biggest adversary. I just said previously, we're created in his image and likeness. He is a triune God, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Huh? Yes. Three in one. Mm -hmm. You are a spirit who possesses a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, who lives glory. in an earth suit known as your body. Glory. There is your trinity, the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. And so often when I look in the mirror, I need look no farther for the problems in my life. Because if I would truly listen and obey to the voice of the living God, I wouldn't make the mistakes. You see, not only would I learn from the ones I've already made and never repeat them, I would learn from everybody else's and never repeat them. And if I did, you see, the book of Hebrews says that all of these things were recorded of the prophets of old. Yes, Lord. So that in reading them and in hearing them, we might know how to do what we are supposed to do and how to avoid doing that which we are not. Yes. Therefore, learning from the mistakes of others and not doing them ourselves. We have no excuse. Ignorance, I was told once by a highway patrolman, there's no excuse for the law, sir. <laughs> see, because I didn't see the sign. I thought I was 
in a still 65 area? If we told the truth, we probably know that we were not in a 65 area. Liar! Well, I didn't see the sign, officer. He says, well, sir, ignorance is no excuse for the law, and that one is stuck with me forever. Sign here. Have a nice day. Be careful. Pull back out in traffic now, sir. He blocks traffic, and you pull back out. You know, but if you weren't doing nothing wrong, you wouldn't have got a ticket. Praise God. Huh? God, God, so he's stopping me for no reason. The Lord just shakes his head and just says, well, Thomas, if you were obeying the laws of the land, there would have been no reason for you to fear those that have been appointed over you. I'm like, wait a minute, Lord, I read that somewhere. He says, exactly. <laughs> huh? He says, the powers that be have been ordained of God, and there's no reason for my people to fear them unless they be disobedient to the laws of the land that these people have been appointed to enforce. That's why I don't we may not like it. Right. You know where I read that one first? Anybody want to guess? La Pinta. <laughs> State Penitentiary. Yeah. I remember hearing his voice real clear because he had called me. He called me before I went in the army. He called me after I got out of the army. He called me before I went there. The little inconveniences discouraged me to the point of making an excuse to live a lifestyle that I shouldn't. And even though I may not have got caught up for things I personally did, I still got caught up. And I remember hearing the Lord say, where are you going to run now, Thomas? And I'm like in an overcrowded cell, and I'm thinking, the only thing my flesh was thinking, if they touch me, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> you know, I was pretty fresh out of the army and everything else, and, you know, and hopefully none of this shocks anybody about me, but, oh well, I, I can't be nothing but me, okay? All I can be other than me is what he changes me into, because I choose to be nothing but that. Okay? And so all I can do is, is, is testify of things that God has done in or through me. You have your own testimony, but this is mine. Amen? Amen. This is my story, and I'll tell it however I want. Amen? <laughs> but he, I, I literally heard him say, what are you going to do now? And I'm like, they're all up against the back corner of the cell because they're like, man, I, I was, uh, he probably didn't want to come anywhere near me at the time. And he says, where are you going to run? thought and I just knew that I knew that I knew inside that this was the voice of God talking to me and I said nowhere sir you got my attention that began a journey that brought me to here this day many years later I think 24 25 years later I'm standing here before you it seems like yesterday this journey but I stand here this morning to tell you that your Messiah, he's going to call his people home. Lord. The millennial reign of Jesus Christ does not begin until after the period of the tribulation. Are you going to, is the church going to be raptured before it? I don't think so. Is it going to be raptured somewhere in the middle? I pretty much think so. You're just hearing my thoughts. I'm not going to tell you, thus saith the Lord, but I can tell you, what you where you can find it and what you can find in the word of God. It really points that direction. Is he going to come at the end? Well, here's the tale. The Lord does not return and touch the earth at the rapture of the church. No one will see him in the sky except us when we get there. It says that every eye will behold him, and that he will touch down on the Mount of Olives and split it in two. And the saints will come with him and do battle with the beast and the false prophet. But that happens, you see, you don't get sound teaching on this enough nowadays. That happens after the tribulation period. That happens after the rapture of the church. People, it's coming. Yeah. If the second coming of Jesus Christ is predicted, and it is, and there are markers that show when that's going to happen, and we know that a tribulation period spelled out by God of seven years has to happen first, and we know that there are markers and identifiers in Scripture as to what will be happening prior, just prior to that tribulation period. Should not our eyes be open? Yeah. Should not our ears be attentive to his cry? Right. Yeah. He said, know that when they cry, peace, peace, in Jerusalem, know then that it is nigh at the door and run for the hills. Mm -hmm. They are talking even today. You can go right now, when you get home today, I know everybody's got smartphones and computers. Type in raptureinthearnow.com. It's not real hard to remember that. Your eyes will be so amazed that you're just going to tell you. 
You don't have to look far. You can find all kinds of, pardon my language, but you can find crap out there. But you can also find things that are relevant so very easily. The worship you just experienced came from the internet. What are we using what God has put for us for? Are we using it for Him? Are we using it for our growth? Are we using it so that we might learn and grow so that we can warn others? You are the Lord's watchman. Here I am. But if you indeed are sheep of his pasture, sheep reproduce and make more sheep. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. People is coming. I can't tell you enough. I was just reading the scripture yesterday in front of this whole room. I had everything all planned out. I thought how I was going to deliver it. Somebody stood up and, and said one thing. Next thing you know, I'm basically kind of giving a little bit of a testimony. And now it went from people looking this way and just crying and weeping to having every eye and everybody's attention. And people, I had just ministered a funeral for the, for the dad of this family in January. The mom sat on the front pew and asked Jody and I in front of her husband's casket to pray for her to receive God's ultimate healing because she wanted to go home with her husband. Everybody else wanted her to stay. The Lord allowed her to stay for a month and a half. And in the way that the whole thing happened, God ushered these people in, of course, in sadness. I mean, it's natural to grieve the loss in this world of a loved one. But he had prepared their hearts to hear the message yesterday and to hear that there is a saving God who through Jesus Christ wants their heart. And that he is returning. And that the rapture is imminent. They heard it as simply as from the book of Thessalonians. About that there will be a trump from God. The archangel with sound. And then the dead in Christ shall rise up out of the graves. And then we which are alive and remain. Shall be changed and shall be caught up together. With them in the air to be with the Lord forever. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. That is the hope, people. You don't need some ten-point sermon on anything. You need only that. That there is a blessed hope that the church will be rescued from this present age and from the oncoming evil that will become dominant. Literally, we live in a free land. I've heard people, oh, it's terrible here. I want to go live here or there. Having been a soldier and around the world, I can tell you we live in the greatest nation on the face of this earth. Amen. You can freely worship Jesus in this place. If you want to go worship Muhammad or a tree or a bush, they'll even let you go do that. You can rub a crystal and put it in your pocket. You can say you are God and worship yourself if you want. You have the freedom to do that here. But the laws of heaven do not change. God has not changed. That's right. He never will. Not for me, not for you, not for anyone. The only one that needs to change is us. We need to change our thinking and wash it with the renewing water of the Holy Spirit through His Word and bring our thinking. Get rid of our stinking thinking and bring it in line with His thinking. That's right. Amen? That's right. So that we think the way that He thought, thinks. Lord, not my way, but Your way. He laid us down the example as He knelt down in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it says as he prayed, he knew what was coming. He knew what was coming. You know that there's actually a medical term for what took place as his capillaries close to the surface of his skin by such high level of stress being upon him caused blood to come out of his sweat pores and out of his eyes like tears. Read it, it's in your Bible. Yes. For that which was set before him, but he said, Lord, if it's possible in any way, to remove this cup from me. But nevertheless, not your will, or not my will, but let your will be done. Yes. And he took upon him the sins of us all, and he went to that cross for us. He expects us to do nonetheless. Lay down your life for your friends and your loved ones. Yes. Oh, I've got all these kids all I'm saying this. Lay down your life. What do I mean by that? 
I guarantee you that there are things in every single one of us that are not pleasing to God. Should I raise both my hands first? Should I always tell on myself first? So as you to not think for some reason that I have it all together and that's why I'm up here. No, I just know what my calling is and I'm not afraid to operate in it. Mm -hmm. I promise you that you have a calling as well. That's right. Whether it's a speaking gift, no matter what it is, God has called you and he has set you apart from the rest of the world. He has marked you with the signet ring of his Holy Spirit and he will not leave you nor forsake you. Glory. If there is no power in your life, it's because you have not allowed him to be powerful in your life. Right. Surrender all to him. Do you know why I raise my hands in worship? I'm up here with my eyes closed. Don't take this wrong, but I'm not concerned about what you're doing out there. I intend to get in the presence of my king. That's right. And no one is going to stop me. That's all right. Do you know that this is one of the attitudes of praise? I think I need to teach on that. There are seven attitudes of praise. There's a reason why we still have the Old Testament. God has not changed. Jesus didn't come to do away with the Ten Commandments. He came to fulfill it. That's right. I'll tell you right now, if we lived a life that was listening, if you put it right there by your door every day you went out and read them one more time before you walked out the door, you'd probably break less of them every day. Yeah, I'm guilty too. That's right, that's right. Does anybody ever see another nice Harley that they just go, gosh, I wish I had that part on mine. <laughs> guilty, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. <laughs> Every day, got to repent, people. Every day, got to right. repent. If a man says that he hath no sin, then he is a liar. Amen? That's, right. that's what right. the scripture says. The only one without is him. We know that we need him. Amen? That we are a people in need of a savior. You know, I'm not putting the scriptures up there today. My wife brought up a really good point. Made me remember something from way back. Oh, oh my gosh, I was like scared to death. You wouldn't think, you know I'd reviewed troops in front of the President of the United States as a drill sergeant before I found myself in, in the penitentiary and yet in there is where I answered a call to be a minister of the gospel and start going through Bible college and I get to a certain point where now it's time to actually do some Bible teaching and some ministry and I'm looking out at a room full, you know, 40 or 50 you know, other convicts, you know, that are, that are there in the chapel that evening. Oh, my gosh, I was, like, scared to death. There's something about the responsibility, I think, that we feel, you know, with the word and to deliver it to somebody else. But also, the devil, he doesn't show up like a big, ugly guy in a red suit with a pitchfork and poke you. No, he shows up as a still, small voice. He shows up as a whisper. Oh, man, aren't you afraid? Don't you feel that? And then you like buy into it. And you start listening to all these lies. What if they see this about you? Or what if they know that about you? What about this? And what about that? Gosh, they remember you when you did this and that. Max, why, how can you go out there and preach the gospel? Because the devil is a liar. Yes, to whom man. much is given, much is required. Amen? Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's the fact. All of us have something that we've been saved and rescued from. Thank we need you. to hear his voice Thank and you. obey it. And to listen to it. Amen. I wanted to read this morning. I, I was just thinking because, you know, the fact is, is that he's coming back for a church that's on fire. He really he is. is. And, and I was back and forth with this as we were worshiping this morning. Because, let me, let me, first, you know what I'm going to, I'm going to read to you. You hear me telling you about the sign. You need to hear it, first of all. And that wasn't what I was going to talk on this morning. But I am going to tell you this. Revelations chapter 12 in your Bibles. And that's why it's not up here because what my wife brought up, it's not to say I won't put it up there anymore, but we notice people start getting lazy. They don't bring their Bible. They don't reach for one that's in front of them in the pew. They don't want to look it up. You know how you become the best with your weapon in the military? You use it. You use it. All the time. Every day. All day. That's how you become good with it. That's how you become skilled with anything. You use it. Amen? And you know that your Bible may be just like my Bible, and that was the first thing that I ever heard, you know, and, and where Brother Joel Osteen got it was from his daddy, John. Mm -hmm. Brother John's book, his autobiography was required reading, I'm sure somebody remembers, in Pastor Kenneth Hagin's Bible College. He said, this is my Bible. Yeah. There are many like it, but none are the same. Because this one is mine. I can do everything that it says that I can do. And I am everything that it says that I am. Amen. Huh? 
And I like to, I kind of personalize it for me because God said what he meant. And he meant what he said. Yes. Huh? His arm is not short, nor is his hand slack concerning his promise that he won't perform it. God does not do anything halfway. He did not call you just so you could get just a little dabble, do you? Just barely make it into the edge of heaven. Because I'm going to tell you right now, we all have a job to do. Yes. Huh? We all have a job to do. I was greedy for the things of the world when I was in the world. I want everything that King Jesus says that I can have from here on out. Mm -hmm. Everything that he says that I can have. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you believe? Amen. What? Do you believe? Yes. Yes, you believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Yes. Huh? Right. If they take up any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That's right. They right. shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. Oh, wait, here's one a lot of them wish they could take out. And they shall speak with other tongues. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, they don't like to hear that because they think it can only be with interpretation. You see, but there are two different words given in the Word of God. When you look up that word, that word is literally, even the Baptist Theological Seminary could not explain it. And so the word says, i.e., of supernatural or unknown origin, and then it says, i.e., not of this world. Do you know that even angels understand the word hallelujah? When you read the Bible, you'll notice that that language is used in heaven. That is the only word that no matter what language you speak on the earth or in heaven is universal. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah is the highest word used for praise. Mm -hmm. No matter what language you speak. And so, my point being, how can we hear what the Word of God says? I don't care what translation you open. I don't care if you pick up a Jehovah Witness Bible known as the New World Translation. Let me get started talking about testimony. Do you know that I've had a Jehovah Witness walk up to me on the job site before? I had his Bible in his hand. Normally it's like, oh, here we go. Figure out a way to expel them, unleash the hounds, whatever, you know. <laughs> Tell them what a bunch of devils they are, which isn't the case. You see, if a person who is deceived knows that they are deceived, is it deception or is it willful disobedience? It's willful disobedience. Mm -hmm. People deceived don't know that they're deceived. They're actually seeking truth. But you know what? I got good news. Any of you that might have family or friends or acquaintances that are caught up in something crazy, the Word of God declares out of the mouth of God that if someone is seeking truth, the Spirit of truth will lead them to Him because He is the Spirit of truth. Amen. Amen. Okay? Are you that workman that God has prepared to send across their path? You never know. The person whom you don't have time for, the one who annoys you, because this is where this is all coming around to, is God is not a God of convenience. Do you know that the times that you are most effective is when you are willing to let God be God in your life when it is inconvenient for you? Yes. When you do not have the time, you do not have the patience, you do not have the finances, whatever it is. But yet an opportunity is there. Yes. And because of your circumstance, you miss it. You don't hear his voice until it's too late. I've been guilty of that too many times in my life. And I made a decision quite a while back. That if I heard his voice, I would not do that. My wife and I, we were just talking about that. So many times we miss opportunities. Mm -hmm. How do you know if you would be the person who God sends across the life of the next Billy Graham? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next David Wilkerson. The next, I mean, I could go on down the line. The next Smith Wigglesworth. You know that the, that the people, these names, if you don't know them, look them up. I'm not going to tell you to go to the library and run in the joint. You can look it up on your smartphone. These people were so full of the Spirit of God that when they came into a town, they didn't put big flyers up everywhere and say, Announcing prophet, yay, yay. <laughs> you know, turn on this channel and if you give $10,000, God will bless you. I know there's people in this room that want to purchase the anointing. You know, uh, first of all, that's a lie from hell. You can't buy it. <laughs> Amen. But the fact is, is that the Spirit of God went with these people. And as they came into a town, the bars closed down, and the people in the bar came to the church to get saved. You know, like the old tent revivals that we hear about here, but like that on steroids. 
Correct. But you see, the Word of God declares that in the last days, that He would pour out upon of His Spirit on all flesh, and it would happen in such a magnitude as though it had never happened before on this earth. Yeah. Literally, the greatest outpouring of His Spirit that mankind will have ever seen is going to happen just awesome. before awesome. the rapture of the church, just before the tribulation. And as you heard the Lord speak in this room while we were in worship, and as you've heard me tell you, as you've heard me teaching about it for several weeks now, actually, even though I've actually tried to get away from it, the Lord keeps directing me back to it. No matter which page of this Bible I turn to, it stands out like neon. He says, I'm coming soon. Yes, Lord. Yeah. People have been saying, oh, it'll be my generation. Oh, it'll be my generation. Jesus said, know this, that when you see these things happen, that generation will not pass away until all of this is fulfilled. Yeah. We are that generation. Yes. Israel was reborn 70 years ago at the end of this year in one night, prophesied in the Bible. The great blood moons. And there shall be signs in the heavens Blood, the moon shall turn into blood, and the sun shall have flaming wings of fire. Oh my God, I should pass, I don't want to pass my cell phone around this room. I'll have to save it, put it up there for you. There's a picture that was snapped over Jerusalem not that long ago, and you could see the giant, the, the super blood moon that we had here. Well, it was more than super there. And right in the background behind the Temple Mount is the blood moon, and right on the other side, in the same sky, is the flaming sun with like wings looking like they come off of it. It made my hair stand up on my whole body when I saw it. And if that was not enough, do you know that as we are approaching Easter, I don't like to actually use that word. You see, it wasn't Easter that our Lord rose from the dead. That was actually a pagan Greek holiday known as Estre, from the goddess of of fertility. Just like bunnies don't lay eggs. Uh, <laughs> Jesus wasn't born in a cold Judean cave in December. People got stuff messed up, man. Mm -hmm. But I don't knock people because we're celebrating. It's what we're celebrating. It's the attitude of our heart. You see, everything that Christianity touches should be transformed into being Christ-like. Mm -hmm. It ain't the other way around. And that was the initial and original intent. But know this, on Resurrection Day, huh? the reason why we chose to start celebrating on Sundays, the first day of the week, instead of on the Sabbath. No, we didn't change it. The Sabbath is still the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But that was mandated by the law. And Jesus came and fulfilled the law. And he did so when he rose on the first day of the week. And so that's where the Catholic Church came up with the word Mass, which simply means to celebrate the celebration of life. We choose to celebrate the life we have in Jesus Christ on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Hey, you just learned something today. And it wasn't even from Wikipedia. It was, it was from Thomasopedia. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Thomas, or was she, that reminds me of something somebody else had said to one of my Christian friends in, in the joint. We'd walk the track and and he would say, let me pass my walking thesaurus. He had all these big $100 words in his pocket all the time, you know. And I had just come walking up. Big fella looked like Hoss on Bonanza, so that's what we called him was Hoss, you know. And, uh, and it was just because I just I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with the Word of God, and I couldn't get enough of it. And this, this kid with a GED for an education all of a sudden started memorizing Scripture. I never imagined that I could do it. All I had to do was put it in front of my face. And he'd say, hey, walk into source, come here, blah, 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 blah. He'd be like, Romans 8. And as we're walking, I'd just be, you know, there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And it's just coming out. And it's just flowing. Man, and I'm weeping as it's coming out and flowing. You know, because I had prayed and asked the Lord at one time prior to that day. I said, Lord, oh my gosh, I had seen this one guy. He had, his name was Nicodemus, just like the man in the Bible. He was an Hispanic fellow from uh, uh, from L.A., and he came there, man. He came there all proud that he was sporting like a zoot suit, too. You know what I mean? Like old school, you know? He came up in there, and we're like, man, who is this joker? You know what I mean? And he, he's talking about, how, you know, how he had done time and how God had gotten a hold of him and everything. 
You know, because nonetheless, inside of such a place, you, you stop thinking that God could, how could I ever be used? God, now I'm ashamed, I'm embarrassed, you know what I mean? I'm an embarrassment and a, and a shame to my family and a this and a that. God says, you know what, shut your mouth. Why don't you just let me be me for a minute, all right? You ready to be quiet and let me listen a little bit? Hmm. Here's one my daddy always told me, and I never realized that it was in the Word of God until I got older. He said, boy, you've got two ear holes and one pie hole. That means that you need to talk half as much as you listen. <laughs> Scripture says, be slow to speak and quick to hear. Amen? Amen? If when you're praying, all you do is do all the talking, you ain't praying. You're just talking. <laughs> you need to spend time with God. Huh? Yes. You ever notice that you can't even answer your children when they're all, Daddy, give me this. Daddy, 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 daddy. You're like, Shh. just give it to Papa and I'll take care of it. Okay. All right, baby, I'll go your way. Right? <laughs> huh? And if they leave it with us, we fix it and give it back, right? Leave it with them. Amen. Stop picking it back up and walking out of here with it. Amen. You come, you ask for prayer. You send in the prayer request. We pray. God does it. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm anything special, but because he said that if you pray to the Father in the name of the Son, he will give it to you. Amen? Yeah. He said, until now you haven't really asked me for anything. Mm -hmm. For anything I tell you that you ask of the Father in my name, he shall do it for you that he might be glorified through the Son. If two of you shall touch us in agreement concerning anything here on this earth, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven might be glorified through his son. Matthew chapter 18 Glory. and verse 19. Thus saith the Lord. Amen? That's Man. what the scripture says. You Man. see, we sometimes these little inconveniences come our way. And we just become miffed by them. Something somebody said we get offended by. Something somebody did that we get offended by. But you know that God in his infinite wisdom knows all of it. He directs all the little pieces. You ever watched a really good movie? I'm talking a good one with a good plot where you're like at the end, you're like, what? No way. I never saw it coming like that. And I just saw one of those recently. It totally caught me, man, at the end. Totally. That's how God does stuff in our lives. You see, if we could see it, it wouldn't have to be God. God is God all by himself. He is faithful always, even when we're not. Yes. Huh? Even when we're not. And all of us fall short. I fall short. Mm -hmm. I do. Oh, I know I just shattered all your hopes and dreams. Pastor's not perfect. <laughs> Remember, we're following him, not me. Amen? Right. Amen? If you see me veering off the course, you need to stay on the course. Amen. You hear me? Yes. I don't choose to, stay, to go off course because I love him and I want to follow him. But I'm just telling you, I'm still a mortal man. Yes. We're here to follow Jesus. Amen. We're here to worship Him. We're here to invite His change into our lives. Amen. If you haven't been changing, press in. He wants you to. Whatever it is you've been trying to hold on to, you're not going to lose yourself by gaining Him. You're going to gain everything Amen. by losing yourself and gaining Him. Yes. Your new identity will be in Him. You know that he's going to even give you a new name? One that yes. only he knows? Yeah. One that only he knows. And I could think up a really cool name or something, you know, but, you know, anybody else here been like, man, how can you name me that? My parents gave me a stupid name, you know? <laughs> you know what you want to know something that's really cool? Yeah. This time you'll know that it was literally the perfect will of God because God has a name ready for you yeah. in heaven. And he wants Thank to give it to you. Me, I want that name. I want what he has for me. And I'm excited to see which of the mansions is going to be mine. Because know this, there's no such thing as making it into heaven by the skin of your teeth and getting a little cardboard box house underneath the overpass down on the corner of Grumble Street because there's no such place in heaven. Huh? In heaven, he said that the streets are paved with gold that is so pure it is clear it doesn't even have color. That the rivers there are pure living water that throw out of the throne room. He said there is no sickness. There is no sadness. There is no disease. There is none of this. There is no poverty. And the Christians get to retire there because the Lord is the light of that place. I know I have a retirement to look forward to. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bricklayers, eh, you might have to work some, do some repair work with Joshua or something, but that's not a bad thing entirely either. Right? I'll be your hog carrier. It's all good. You know, 
He has a plan and a purpose for us. And he wants us to be willing to let him bring about that change in our life. And you know, as I was talking earlier, the, the, the signs of the times and that they're coming, and I was getting ready to read to you what this, this sign was in the sky. Well, Revelation chapter 12. And now a great sign appeared in heaven. You've got to remember John the Revelator was taken by the angel of the Lord up into the third heavens, and he was allowed to see everything from the beginning of time to the end of time as we know it. And this great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And then another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. And his tail drew a third of the stars of the heaven, and they threw them to earth. I'm going to stop right there, because what I want to share with you, the sign of the woman with the crown of the twelve stars, it is a heavenly sign. The astrological sign Virgo, by the way, horoscopes and all that, that ain't nothing new. God called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldeans, and the Chaldeans were famous for being astrologers and astrologists, and they worshipped the gods of the heavens that they saw. But God called him out of there, and he gave him explanation and said, you see all of these things? I'm the God who has created them all. But they didn't have GPS. They didn't have maps with grid squares on them like we learned in the army to read and all this kinds of stuff. They had the stars. Because the stars, just like today's modern astrological clock, are the most accurate thing that there is. Sailors of old navigated the globe by the stars. The wise men follow the stars. Yeah. to the resting place and birthplace of our Savior Jesus. That star of Bethlehem has been proven through software to call, actually the software was called Starry Night Software. And if everybody remembers back in 2005, it became very, very prominent and popular in all the churches. They were all watching it. I'd even showed it to my congregation at the time, was that that software was able to be dialed back in time and show the star's movement and see that something very unique happened. And one of the planets, because if you don't know what you're looking at when you look in the night sky, stars and planets look the same. Other than in biblical times, they called planets wandering stars because they actually move. God bless you. And they could be seen to move. The first star you see at night with the moon, that's actually the planet Mars, by the way, in our atmosphere. I really, really enjoyed science and astrology as a little kid in school, and so a lot of this stuff caught my attention. And I'm looking and seeing the fact that, first of all, the signs in the heavens that they followed, the wise men followed this unique thing that happened, and the planet Jupiter, known as the king planet, also likened to Jesus because it's the ringed planet with stripes. Isaiah 53 and 5, and he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Yes. And they followed this wandering star, which was actually the planet Jupiter, and it rested and stopped directly. These men were men who studied the stars and had charts with them. There was not three of them, nowhere does the Bible say that. As a matter of fact, wealthy, wise astrologists back then traveled with whole entire caravans and with tens of thousands of dollars in riches. Jesus' entire life and ministry was funded the day of his birth, just for the record. If God has given a vision to you, he will provide the provision for it. Okay? Yeah. He doesn't do anything halfway. But the sign of the heavens would be that the constellation Virgo, which normally only has nine stars in her crown in the sky, would be seen to have in the area that looks like her womb, the planet Jupiter, or the wandering star would enter in on a certain date and begin a unique little orbit around in that area. And for the first time in human recorded history, that star would then exit after an exact nine-month rotation in Virgo's womb and be seen exiting. And there is another constellation that appears, and it is the dragon. Do you know that for the first time in human history, according to the scientists and according to the same software that pinpointed the star of Bethlehem, that on September the 23rd of 2017, most prominently visible over the skies of Israel, will be the constellation Virgo, who, by the way, just about the time that our newest president was inaugurated into office, Jupiter entered the womb of Virgo. 
and has been there moving around just like was prophesied. The Feast of Trumpets, known as Rosh Hashanah, happens at midnight on September the 22nd. And with the trump of God shall the angels declare. Is anybody picking up what I'm putting down out there? Am I telling you, no, that day the rapture is going to happen? No, because I'd be making myself a liar. Because Jesus telling his disciples when they said, what day is that going to happen? They didn't say what season, they said what day. And he said, I tell you, to them that have ears, let them hear. He says, you will be able to tell the season but not the day. For it is appointed only to the Father to know the day, not even the Son as he appointed to himself, nor even the angels of heaven know that day. Only the Father knows. But you will see these signs. And he began to tell them about the moon turning to blood and the, and the sun into flaming wings of fire and that there would be a great sign in the heavens and earthquakes and places they hadn't happened before and wars and rumors of wars well we've always had them but you know that there are over a hundred and something conflicts going on armed conflicts around our globe right now more than ever in human history today as i stand here before you everything else is in place the gospel has been preached on every continent of this globe with internet and satellite it is able to see people if they have Facebook can hear and see me in this room preaching right now through that phone on the other side of this globe this very second. No lag, no downtime, instantly. The scripture said that they would be able to see what happened to the prophets of God instantly around the globe. This is the first time in human history that we live in a time that technology enables that to happen. And coupled together with that are way, way to other many things that people might want to try to call coincidences, okay? The Feast of Trumpets is Rosh Hashanah. We are in the year, by the way, God's perfect number of completion is what? Seven. Seven, seven, seven. The number of God, the number of completion. We are in the year of the Jewish calendar of five, seven, seven, seven right now. That year concludes after the Feast of Trumpets, which begins the very day that the stars show that sign in the heavens and that the woman, the constellation Virgo, will have had, instead of nine stars, the other planets all aligned perfectly to form a ring of 12 stars in her crown around her head. You just heard me read it in the book of Revelations. And at that same time, the planet Jupiter will leave the constellation looking like a woman who had given birth. I don't know about you. Maybe you're a better gambler than me. My daddy always said, never bet more than you can afford to lose. And that kept me from ever getting caught up gambling because I can't afford to lose nary a penny. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, I won't bet on this either because I can't afford to lose missing the first bus. He said you'd know the season. The final signs that mark that season. A season is an appointed measure of time According to God, it's not a season as we know it, three months. It could be three days, three hours, three years, 300 years. I'm not going to put my bets on anything other than I know that I know that I know that he's coming soon. I know that the rapture is imminent and at the door. And I know that the final signs in the heaven to mark that season of the churches being caught away and the tribulation period that precedes that are happening this year, in front of our eyes. This year, in front of our eyes. How privileged are we? Do you know that the prophets of old, every prophet, Elijah, Enoch, every one of them, Abraham, the greats of old, they passed away. Their life expectancy ran out in the natural. And they went to be with the Lord and still long to see the day that we walk in. The day we don't have to offer sacrifices of bulls and goats and turtle doves to come into the presence of a mighty God. We can come here and simply gather together in His name and begin to lift up His praises. His presence comes rushing into the room. We can boldly come before His throne of grace to obtain mercy and find help in our time of need. No human can come boldly before Him before such a time as this. But He's been patient and He's been long-suffering with us. 
It was 14 generations was the marking point. From event of God, event of God, the birth of Christ. It's been 28 almost generations since he rose from the dead. How much more patient do we think the Father is going to be before he comes for his church? It's time for people to stop playing church and start being what we are. Be who you are. You are the church of the living God. Yes. You are anointed ones of the anointed one who carries the anointing. That is, I know it's a mouthful, but his name is not Jesus Christ. He is Jesus of Nazareth who is the Christ. He is the anointed Messiah. You see, believers were first called Christians in a place called Antioch because they went around everywhere teaching and preaching the gospel, God confirming it with signs following. They went about everywhere doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. And because of it, the rest of the world mocked them and mockingly said, oh, look at those, look at those anointed. Look at those, remember, they didn't speak English. Christos is a short version of, uh, you know, Christ is a short version of Christos from the Greek. But Mashiach, Messiah, was the word that was used. They think they're like him. But many others said, you know what, we can't help but take notice that they have been with him. These are unlearned and ignorant men. And look, they speak the mysteries of God and God backs up what they've said with signs following. The dead are brought to life. The lame are able to speak and walk. The deaf hear and the blind see. How can we deny that they've been with Jesus? Glory. Let him be the Christ in your life. Not just the last name of a dead deity because he's not dead, he's alive. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus is alive and he is alive in us. Yeah. We need only open our eyes, church, and allow his light to shine out. Amen? Yes. Like I say, Lord, if you would just but peek out the window. Lord, just, look, just peek out the window. Oh, let me open them both. Oh, Lord, just peek out the window. Because if that light that is within us is the light of Christ, it would transform and transfigure not only us, but those who we come in contact with. Amen. It's not you, it's Him. Amen. It's Him in you. Yeah. It's not me that draws you here, it's Him. Mm -hmm. right. It's Him. It's the Spirit of the living God. And He's still a holy and a righteous God. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And the only way that can happen is if we sell out to him. That's right. Yes. Huh? That's right. If we sell out to him. Glory. Let him be God of all in our life. Mm -hmm. If something convicts you, if you feel him going, get rid of it. Get rid of it. I don't care what it is. Oh, you want me to get rid of it, Lord? Okay. Let's go. Oh, that too? Okay. Oh, you want me to stop acting like that? Oh, that one's a little bit harder, but okay. You got something in your life that you've been struggling with? Give it to Jesus. Don't eat for a day. Just drink water. Come on, man. I know I'm talking to somebody in this room because, uh, you know what? There was a time where, you know, we used to joke about how uh, sheet rockers lived on Gatorade and Crank back in the day when I first started, in the, you know, in the construction world. You know, we could make it for days on end with nothing but some Gatorade and some water and a couple wines. But yet, the minute that we want to fast and pray, something distracts us. All of a sudden, you're so hungry. Oh, well, you know, Lord, I, I gave up my cupcakes for dessert. Come on, man, really? A sacrifice means just that, a sacrifice. Right. Amen? Seriously. You know, a biblical fast is really only from sundown to sun up. You can't make it that long to give something for Jesus. I'll tell you what, your flesh, it'll act up. I'm hungry. You know, the devil will come and try and poke and prod you. You know what you do? Pray. Get on your knees and pray. Put on some worship music. Put your headphones and seek his face and pray. And before you know it, whatever that thing is, it'll seem like a distant memory. It will be gone. Thank you, Jesus. He will bring you from glory to glory. He will transform and transfigure you because he is still the same yesterday today 
and forever. He changes not, and he's coming soon, and he's coming for you and for me, and he's looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 I know we have prayer requests in this room this morning. We always have prayer requests. I know it because you're still here in human form. I'm still looking out here at these earth suits in this room. So I know there's prayer requests in this room. Amen? Come on. Let's start at the back and work our way to the front. And if you don't speak them out, I expect to see them in the prayer box over there so I can pray over them. Don't shortchange me now. Come on. I love to pray. Huh? I love to lift up the requests before a mighty God because I know that He is a prayer answering God. Amen? Amen. He said in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, Call unto me and I will answer you Amen. and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest Amen. not. Amen? Amen? You know that if God says I shall or I will from here on out, it's going to change the way you think every time you see anywhere in the Bible. I don't care, Old Testament, New Testament. You see in the words, I shall or I will. That literally means that if you ask God to do something and he has not even created it yet, that he will absolutely create it if it doesn't even exist. You can look it up. I challenge you. You see, I didn't have a formal education. So as I started to be Biblically trained, if you will. I had to look, man, I had Vines Analytical, Dictionary, Strong, all of that, man. And the Holy Ghost. It's like, okay, I hear you, Lord, but I'm I'm looking. I'm searching. And so I haven't arrived, but I do got a little bit that I can share. Amen. And he can make up for the rest. So know this, I'm not just pulling it out of a hat. I'm telling you that I'm telling you that I know, that I know, that I know. Amen. That if he said, I shall or I will, and you ask him, he will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. With man this might be impossible, but not with God. Because with God, all things are possible to them that believe. Amen? And I'm looking at a room full of believers. So if we got prayer requests, please speak them out so that we can lift it up together in agreement before the Lord in this place. Come on, Brother Ken. Yes. Uh, Dolores Geisling, uh, she's uh, Sandy's mother, having trouble with her lungs, hmm. infection in her lungs. In the name of Jesus, I, I believe that he'll touch her today, and she will be on her way to recover. Amen. 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 Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Yes. Amen. That's what that means. You know that? You know when you say amen, you mean I agree with everything that you just said. Amen. Huh? Amen. Father, in the name yes. of Jesus, God. We lift up this woman of God to you, God. We lift up Sandy's mama. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, Satan, we put you on notice right now, you spirit of infirmity. You loose her and you let her go right now. In Jesus' name, we loose healing over her body, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray supernatural healing right now, God. We know there's no distance in prayer. And Father, we, your saints, we agree together according to your word. Father, we just thank you right now, King Jesus, that you're touching and healing her body. We count it done. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Come on. I know some more prayer requests in this house. That's what I'm talking about. Hands are going up. Yes, sir. Come on, Larry. Uh, I want to pray for a friend of mine. Uh, his name's John Hahn. Uh, we were best friends growing up. I was the best man at the wedding. He, he was, he's been in prison for 35 years. Uh, just got released. He's and um, he spent 13 years of that in solitary because he mm -hmm. was affiliated with AD and mm -hmm. stuff. But mm -hmm. I've been in contact with him. He's doing really good. You know, mm -hmm. I asked him about where his walk was with the Lord. He says, hey, I, you know, I praise Jesus every day. I'm in this transitional home right now. Mm -hmm. It's a Christ-centered one, you know, so he sounds like he's on the right track. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get involved in some things and getting back to the community and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep him in prayer that he... Mm -hmm. Continues that way, and then he adjusts, and you know that he's going to be an impact out there. And people, you know, have been through or are going to go through things that he's been through. Mm -hmm. he's a Where's he at? Man, if he, if he's going to really serve the Lord. He's in Oakland right now. Okay. He's in Oakland. You know, so my 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 stepdad. Some have met him. Anointed man of God. He uh, he did 32 years. He got out uh, just three years ago. And uh, he is, we were in ministry together, uh, and now uh, he got, uh, uh, he's licensed and ordained and, and uh, ministering, getting ready to pastor uh, one of the Pentecostal churches of God down wow. uh, either in um, 
uh, they live in Sanger, my mm -hmm. mom lives, but I think uh, they was either going to be Fowler or one of the other ones. They were still up Fowler. in the air. They got to kind of moving around and speaking. But he's the Lord just put it on my heart. He's the perfect person um, for Brother John to get a hold of, uh, get at me, and I'll give you Pastor Robert's phone number so they can get in contact with each other uh, because he's going to also be a part of starting a transitionary home like that down here in Sanger. They, they need to hook up. Yes, ma'am. We're going we're gonna to lift him up in prayer, but did, what did you have, Grandma? Oh, I need, a, I need, I have a prayer request for my son. Yes, ma'am. He's bound with gambling and spends all his money there. And What's his name? Angelo. 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 I want to pray for John first, and we're going to pray for Angelo. Let's mm -hmm. all agree for Brother John. Father yes, in heaven, sir. in Jesus' name, I thank you, God. Lord, I remember that you prophesied, Lord, uh, uh, through a great prophet that was proven, Lord, when he came, and I was still on the inside, guy coming up on and even protected from society, Lord God, that they're in there on fire for you, and that you're going to release them out into society, Father. Lord, I just remember that word even now as Brother Larry was talking, God, and I pray that you would, Lord, pour out your anointing on this man, on Brother John, Father, and that you would yes. lead him to the right contacts, Lord God. Uh, Father, that maybe he would even hook up with Pastor Robert, God, and, and that you would, Lord, use them, use them, God, to minister to those that you have appointed, Father. I just thank you for your mighty work in his life and that you would help to keep him focused, Lord God, and send workers across his yes. path that will come alongside yes, him, Lord, yes. and open up doors of opportunity yes, that no one can shut, that you be given all of the glory and praise. We thank you and count yes. it done in the name of Jesus. And now, God, we lift up Angelo to you. Yes. Yes. Lord God, I pray... Father, in Jesus' name, that the heritage on this man from his mama would be that of the Holy Ghost, the baptism yes, of fire, yes, God, Lord. as his yes, mama's request yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Satan, we cancel your assignment yes, on him right now, and I just pray that he would come to his senses. Even now, we break this gambling spirit off of him in the Thank name you, of Jesus, your spirit of addiction. Yes. Be gone now yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. Loose your hold yes. from him. Yes. And we just release the healing power of the Holy Spirit yes. right now over him, God. Give Angelo a new yes. mind and a new desire that can yes. only be fulfilled and found you, in Jesus. you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Send workers across his yes. path appointed by you, God, to speak yes. to him even now. We thank you and we count it done. In Jesus' yes, name, Lord. Right. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you. We thank you. Sister Connie, I saw you wanting to raise your hand back there. What do you got? Um, well, I have a phrase that, um, the last Sunday I wasn't here because I was just like struggling and just like discussing with myself and just uh -huh. like a trial that my son and I have been going through with like court and stuff and it's like I don't know how I got in there but uh, I was dealing with it and then all week I was praying and reading and then I went to work Friday morning and I tell brother they're like oh, wow did you see that thing you read and I was sharing with them and just see like that released me he's like well that's not what mine said and then I went back and I looked and but the what I read what I saw yeah was just you know talking about you know how we have an enemy and how he uses others but I mean it wasn't there and I flipped back pages flipped back weeks and it's like the Lord I know I saw that and then that was just such a freeing thing hmm. I, I'm still going through it but I don't feel that like I would have felt like hmm. sobbing all week long just like oh, wow. heaviness but like I told my brother here when I walked in, it's like, oh, it's a new day. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I did last week. Amen. Amen. Still in it, but God is our Lord and He's in control. Indeed. Praise Amen. Amen. Praise Him. And then your son's name is David, right? Van. 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 And to pray for Melanie too, because I feel like she's, well, I don't know. I just want God to work in her. Amen. Well, he wants to work in their life, too. Amen. Father, we lift up Van to you, Lord God. We lift up Melanie to you, Lord God. Father, you know the mama's desire in her heart, but Lord, we know your desire in your heart that none would perish and all would enter into everlasting life and that you would be able to have your way in their life. God, Lord, I don't need to know the 
situation of the courts or anything else. You are the great judge. And so we just pray that your will be done, Lord God, here in earth and in their lives as it is in heaven, that you would just have your way, Lord God, in this whole situation and circumstance, God. I just thank you, Lord God, that you are moving and working. And God, thank you. Lord, for that supernatural revelation to Sister Connie, Father, that your word was such an encouragement to her that morning, Lord God. That was just confirmation that, Lord, nobody else even saw what she saw. Lord, because you were speaking to her, Lord God, you are our personal Jesus for each and every one of us, Lord God. You're not a God who's just off in the distance that we can't reach, Lord. You're right there for us. And we just thank you, God. I just thank you that you're moving on her, Lord God, in such a way. Thank you for my sister, Lord God. I just yes. pray right now that your blessings, yes, that your mercy would be upon her, Lord God, and that your peace that passes all understanding, Glory. Lord, would keep her mind and her heart by Christ Jesus our Lord. We declare it done in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. I want to I wanna pray for Grandma. Amen. <laughs> oh. amen. Father God, I just yes, bless you, Lord. Lord, for her. Father yes, God, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you are not Jesus. done with her yet, oh, Lord, Jesus. and that <laughs> she has not been forgotten from you, Father yes, God. God. And I just pray for her mind right now in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus. Yes. I thank you, Father God, that she has Jesus. a good mind. Yes, Lord. She yes. has the mind of Christ. Yes, God. And I come against any any kind of dementia right now in the name of yes, Jesus. Lord. I come yes, against Lord. it in the name of yes, Jesus. Lord. Yes, Satan, Lord. you're a liar. Yes, Jesus. You are a liar. And I thank you, Lord, that she has many years with us, Father God. Jesus. She just has like a sweet spirit, Father God. And I ask, Lord, that you would just use her mind. Yes. God. in your kingdom, Father yes, God. God. It doesn't matter the age. 80, 90, Father God, you still use us, Father God. Yes, and Lord. I know, Lord, that I can tell by her fruit, Father Jesus. God, that she loves you, Lord, yes. and that she is a warrior in your kingdom, Father yes, God. God, and she's an intercessor, Father God. Yes, God. She prays for her family, Lord, mm -hmm. and, she, and it's because of her a lot of them came into the kingdom because yes, of Lord. her prayers yes, father god i thank you father god for her and that you're yes, going to she's going to live a long life father yes, god lord. in jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus amen and amen and amen oh glory to god that's yes, a thank you god. my grandma <laughs> <laughs> amen amen more prayer requests in the room there is oh sorry there is one on here, um, uh, Brian, uh, his wife, let's see, prayed for his wife. She had a seizure in church this morning, oh my. and they don't know why, and her name is Becky. Praise God, getting prayer requests from people watching live Thank on Facebook. Lord. Oh, my Jesus, Thank I'm you just Lord. overwhelmed. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you. Father, we just come yes, before you, God. Right now, yes. Satan, we put yes. you on notice. Yes. We cancel your assignment in the name of Jesus. Yes, you yes. loose your hands from Becky. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. God, we loose your healing touch right now. Yes. Holy Spirit, have your way yes. and move upon this yes. situation, yes, Lord. Lord. Move upon her, her sails, Lord. Every every cell in her body Lord every blood cell Lord in Jesus name that they just come in line God every vein every vessel with the way that you created her God back perfectly in alignment Father open them up to flow that the way they're supposed to God and reverse any effects from any kind of stroke that they might have said God just restore renew and refresh we lose your healing power and we thank you in advance that there is no distance for prayer not for you god in jesus name thank amen and amen and amen and let's give the lord some okay. prayer sure. okay and i want to pray for um uh families like sons and moms or dads just within the family unit um one of uh, linda her and her daughter need healing in their relationship and kind of like a overall for Indeed. families because you know yes the enemy wants to break up yes. families and yes you know lord yeah. right now thank you lord for that word yes. 
Yes, Lord. He said that I would not only pour out my spirit in those yes. days. Yes. He said, but I would turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Yes. Yes. And the hearts That's of right. the children back to their yes. parents. Yes. Yes. Lord, we just ask you for restoration in families yes, right now, God. Thank you, Lord. I bind the spirit of division yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And I just lose your healing touch now, God, for relationships. Yes. Lord, between mothers and daughters, yes. fathers and daughters, Lord God, mothers and sons. Fathers and sons, Lord God, just as you declared in your word, Father, we are church, your church, Lord. We loose that right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would move in a mighty way. Father, thank you for restoration. In Jesus' name, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You know what? We do have refreshments this morning. I would love to have opportunity to fellowship with some of you if you have time to, to stay afterwards. Uh, and whether you do or do not, I have to tell you right now, may the Lord bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he give you peace. Huh? Yes. May the glory of the Lord yes. just rest upon you. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, Amen. go with Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand.